What's going on, Shrew Game? My name is Camden. I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, I'll be doing an update on BlackBerry ticker symbol BB. We're looking at the wider view of things. I'll bring it to the intraday viewpoint as well. And then we'll bring that flow of the calls and puts over while we pay attention to the Ortex data to get behind the scenes and what these slimy, oh, grimy short sellers are doing in BlackBerry's flow. So without any further ado, let's just go ahead and get right on into it. Uh, so same exact setup we've had for a few days or so. Of course, we have a different setup in our uh, trading view, but we're just keeping it in Weeble for now. As of right now, we've been in a falling wedge uh, while we're also in a falling wedge. So it's a double falling wedge setup. The last falling wedge that we had was generally if I can point it out, this long-term setup that we had, support and resistance, and your breakout trend was the gap up from 9.10 to the high point of 12.30. So that $3 gap up was just that long-term breakout. Now with us being suffocated in a short-term and medium-term falling wedge, we're looking for three more breakout scenarios ahead. So everything is bullish, of course. The only ones that uh, really can't see those projected trends are the ones losing a lot of money during this downtrend, and stuff like this happens. But what differentiates traders is how they react to such movements down here at these low points. Uh, in a more hefty in volatile environment, things can get crazy, but realize the people selling at the bottom of bearish trends aren't even giving themselves the chance for the turnaround. And as of right now, we've been hugging this descending support for three days straight, bouncing for three days straight. Now I'm going to knock on wood when I say this because uh, you can see you bounced under the support, hit your descending support right here and closed above. So if this is going to be a thing that could be coming to fruition, right? That could be happening. Then hundred percent in the days ahead, they could dip you lower than the support as low as they need to dip you, but you're always looking for a reversion back up to hold yourself under this descending support or more or less just close above this descending support. So everything is beautiful. It can get hefty. We dipped in the water today as expected and we fell down to 869. We can do it again the next day. We can do it again next week. And I just want you to understand that uh, of course it may feel hefty and it may seem hefty, but there is some pretty big volume flying in down here at these low ranges. I mean, just in the intraday alone, you get a lot of spikes up in volume. Some of them are crazy, crazy bullish to send you over resistances, and some of them are to send you under support. So it's extremely volatile down here. If I can bring you into the daily candle pivot points, you can see that volatility more or less is starting to get released. Uh, just less of a pinch between your pivot points, your supports and resistances. It seems like there it's more extended ahead. It gives you more room to run down, more room to run up. It's just more volatile environment. So when you get red in a more volatile environment, things can get crazy, but it doesn't defeat the fact that you can swing yourself right back up like we did today in our intraday setup. I mean, it got really hefty. In fact, I'm pretty sure the SPY ended up imitating a bounce. So if this is going to give us more strength in our markets, if it's going to give us more strength in our trends ahead, and we're getting just the little amount of green from 869 to the high point almost being $9 today, then that gap up that you had of around 40 to 50 cents is just from the slightest amount of strength from the SPY. If I can compare BlackBerry's movements today to the S&P 500's movement, you were down here at the lowest supports you needed to hit. You tickled the lowest and you got a lot of strength from it. So dip buyers were here. Dip buyers bought the dip and we're just looking to see this project into more strength in the days to come. Just like our last long-term rundown we have for the SPY, it hit the support exactly we were looking to catch. And of course uh, that dip was bought for a nice little run up ahead, but this can only play out for so much more longer. So if we're going to get the stretches we need to see in our markets and we're going to get the strength we need to see in our markets, then BlackBerry and everything else that we love should get the strength it deserves as well. This is kind of like a roll of the dice. The dip was bought today and you bounced three days in a row. So this could definitely take a turn for the worst in the week ahead, as in maybe running down to hit support again and the buyer's not really being there to combat that selling pressure. But as of right now, we've imitated a bounce three days in a row. And the last time that we even saw anything remotely near this, it was these three or four days down here, followed by nothing but green ahead. So I'm not gonna say it's gonna be peaches and sunshine, but if we get a nice little stretch, it should do wonders for our stocks and the market. With our max pain this week, falling from 10 to 9.50, I believe this change was on Wednesday. You can see we did have a beautiful gap up from the low $8 ranges today. However, we closed near nine. It's not 9.50, but uh, we closed generally near the same ranges. With the highest bought up put options this week though being 9.50, you can see a lot of the bears, a lot of the retail bears, right? Buying up put options actually made a little bit of money over this week. So it's really crappy to hear about that. It's really crappy to even think that the people betting against us are making money, but that's what it comes down to. That's what conviction comes down to 100%. There's a million ways to make money in the market. We gave the bears a, a really rough time on that gap up to 12, but the ones that stayed convicted in their bearish trends, I know it sounds malicious, but they made money in the market. So um, with this recent paper hand purge, it is what it is. The projected trends are still there and they're still ahead. We have institutional ownership kind of backing uh, BlackBerry, kind of backing the company and with a more increase in this institutional ownership. Of course, this can be twisted into a bearish outlook, but it gives more of a comfort on our support. 
support. It gives us more of a comfort on the ranges where all of these institutions are loading up at. So with a max paint of 950, we did get near it, but we didn't close over nine. However, with this closing near nine, it just makes sense. Even in a crazy volatile market, the stock still tends to close near its max pain on Friday. So if you can't see through the fog, if price action is getting really hefty, getting really confusing on a day-to-day -day basis, then when all else fails, pay attention to your max pain. When it comes down to BlackBerry's short interest data today, you can see that was a whopping negative 2.7%. So the little run-up we had yesterday and short interest percentage change, it's coming right back down again today. This was a discrepancy of almost 1 million shares in between your borrowed and returned. And with returned being 1 million and our borrowed being around 150,000, you can see that it was a drastic difference in between borrowing against BlackBerry and returning in BlackBerry's float. So uh, with a net difference of 900K, it comes out to around 2.7% of the total borrowed stock amounting to 33.8 million. So when you come down here, the estimated short interest percentage of the free float is around 6.6%, and this comes out to around 34 million short shares on BlackBerry's float. I know that seems hefty, I know it seems crazy, but realize that this has been dropping in a very drastic amount. If I can bring your shares on loan over, just from this recent high point uh, for BlackBerry on September 23rd, you had some of the highest borrowing that you've had ever since your June run-up. However, short sellers got greedy, some of them took their gains, took their profits on that rundown, but you can see that the shares on loan were picking up as the stock price was falling. So with this short-term little run-up from $9 to $12.30, you can see that short sellers have had a hard time making money in the float, but with this recent rundown again, whoever's been left in the float down here at these lower ranges are just given another chance down here to get out of their short positions again. Hey, guess what, my friends? They had their chance at 9.10. They had their chance at 9.20. They had their chance when we ran down three or four times to around 9.40 to 9.50, and as of right now, we're right back under nine, and you can see short sellers are starting to cover and return those shares. So uh, they, hopefully they learned their lesson from the last time. If they didn't, then they're going to be getting another run up again in the near future. And let's hope for the best while we prepare for the worst. I mean, short selling is almost non-existent in BlackBerry's float. Ever since you January rip, ever since the history of short selling, your utilization has made it up in January to almost 50%. In June, at the top of that run up to 35%. And as of recently, with this little run up to 1240, and short sellers really having a hard time in BlackBerry's float, you can see that utilization has fallen all the way to the low point of around 14% recently. With us hugging slightly above 17%, it's slightly starting to pick up. But at the end of the day, while the shares on loan are taking a slight rundown, then the utilization is going to follow suit, maybe not on the exact day, but in the near future. So this is playing out in a very beautiful fashion. Think about it. If the stock was going to fall, die, see death to the deepest trenches of hell, not only would short sellers be on it like white on rice, it's Blackberry we're talking about. I mean, Blackberry has been a bear fest for years upon years upon years. With the whole shift of sentiment and borrowing and shorting and Blackberry's float uh, happening as we speak in this recent price activity, then you can see that short sellers are really just not projecting any more bearish moves ahead. If they are, then it's a little short-term rundown and they're looking to get themselves out down here at these lower ranges. Realize that there is a way it can get heftier, right? I know we were just over in the daily candles looking at our pivot points, but we're going to do it again, right? We dipped down a little bit lower than we expected today. Of course, we were talking about this dip in the water yesterday in our video. So tomorrow, if we get another dip in the water, we're looking to hit around the ranges of like 849 to 850 and look to close higher for the day. So on Monday, next week, if it gets crazy in the start of the week, we're looking for a reversion. We're looking for strength after the rundown. So as of right now, we're looking like we're at the bottom of our bearish trend. Anybody selling out at the bottom, we're looking to make an example out of them or BlackBerry stock is looking to make an example out of them because in BlackBerry stock, you're really going to have to give your trends time to play out. And that's going to be the only way you're going to be able to make money in this float. I mean, there's been a lot of people just really frustrated today and yesterday and the day before about BlackBerry's price action. But if it's hefty and if it feels hefty, then most likely it's for a reason. They don't want to see you winning. They don't want to see you continuing to hold your stock. And if you can't see through the fog to the projected trends ahead and you're selling out at the bottom of your bearish trend, then you really have lost all vision and you've lost all conviction. So it's just what happens in the stock market to a lot of retailers. I know it's crappy and I know it sounds malicious, but it tends to happen and I'm not surprised it's happening right now. So we're looking for a nice little turnaround to retest closer to the ranges of 11 to 12. I'm not going to give any certain price by any certain date because my feed is up. I bought more today on the dip. I bought more yesterday and the day before on that dip. And I'm just continuously bringing my average down. I was already convicted in my average of around like 1060, I believe so. But with today's rundown, I bought around five, six, maybe even seven more to bring it down to 1030 or so. So uh, I'm just using this to my advantage. I hope a lot of people are using their conviction to their advantage as well. And hopefully it pays off for everybody in the near future or just in the long-term future ahead, regardless if it's near or not. 
or if it is long term or not. I'm convicted. I understand the projected growth potential for BlackBerry. So I have my feet up and I am absolutely chilling. At the end of the day, you got to ask yourself the same exact question. If you can bring yourself to that standpoint, because nobody can really answer that other than yourself. I wish I could for you, but I want you to understand that this is never financial advice. If you can like, share, subscribe, hit that bell as well. It really helps me out. It does wonders for the channel. It shows YouTube that I'm getting support so that they can support me as well. And this is really what we need over here. We need some more people to bat an eye as well towards BlackBerry to see the massive growth potential it has and also to watch the history of our videos, right? There's like a storyline, a day-to-day storyline of BlackBerry, the projected trends we've gone through, the amazing times, the rough times we've gone through. If you ever want to like study a little bit in the history, if you ever want to learn the behavior of BlackBerry, like the back of your hand, we have a million flipping videos on a day-to-day basis to track these trends. So I will catch up boys. Please stay safe out there. Have a great weekend. Uh, I know it sounds corny, but enjoy yourself. Uh, And a snap of a finger, we're going to be right back here with green and red candles in front of our eyes. So do whatever you do. Enjoy yourself. Have fun this weekend. And I'll catch up boys. Peace out. uh... Game.